medical issues. Okay, let's talk about equity. Let's talk about equity. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about aces and the seven deuce. Uh, I don't know how the words of this song go, so I can't really make up an accurate parody. Okay, here we go. This is a tool that's going to help me teach you about equity. Equity is the percentage of the time that you should win a hand statistically. So, for those of you who don't know, poker starts out with two hidden secret hole cards being distributed to you. And before you join the hand, you have to decide whether you're going to play those cards or fold them and forfeit the hand. And different cards have different chance of making a five card poker hand by the end of the hand. That's too many uses of the word hand, and that's because there are two definitions of the word hand in poker. One is a round of poker is called a hand, basically. Oh yeah, let me get you this, the uh, battle lake. Boop! And um, the other definition is the two secret cards that you're holding. So anyway, let's say that you're holding the best hand in poker. So what, here's all the hands in poker, by the way. All the different hands. Up here are all the cards that are the same suit. That's what the S is for by them. So like ace nine suited could be the ace and the nine both of spades or the ace and the nine both of hearts or the ace and the nine both of clubs or the ace and the nine both of, what's the other one? Diamonds, it's the morning, I'm awake. Hey, there's some incent up there. That's like a free cryptocurrency if you're into that kind of thing. Anyway, the best hand in Texas Hold'em is a pair of aces. So let's say you're holding a pair of aces. It doesn't matter what kind. It could be one of hearts, one of diamonds, and blah, 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 blah. And let's say your opponent is holding the worst hand in Texas Hold'em. Do you all know? Do you all know what the very worst hand of Texas Hold'em poker is? It is the seven and the two of no, not the same suit. Okay? All right, cool. So let's say that you're holding aces and your opponent is holding seven two off suit and you guys are just gonna go all in, just all in before even seeing any of the community cards that come out on the board that you get to match your cards with to figure out what the best hand is. So you have no further information except that you have your hand of aces, which is a pretty sweet deal. Well, what percentage of the time, let's say if we ran, ran the same hand 10,000 times in a row. What percentage of the time are you going to win with your aces? What percentage of the time do you think? I'm about to hit the evaluate button. Drum roll. The percentage of the time you're going to win is 88.20% of the time against that opponent in that scenario if you were to run it like 10,000 times in a row. So that means that your equity in the hand is 88%, okay? Nice, Rob Dizzle knew it was seven deuce off suit. Yeah. So 88% is your equity. That's the equity you have in the hand. That is the amount of chips that is rightfully belonging to you. But the situation is when you win that hand in those 10,000 times, every time you win, you are realizing your equity. In fact, you're getting more than your fair share when you win that hand, because it's all in, right? You're getting more than your own fair share. But those times that you lose, 11.8% of the time, that's when you're not realizing your equity and you're not winning your fair share. But it all evens out, right? And that's how equity works over thousands and thousands and thousands of hands. Special note, you can't opt out of the times when you lose, right? So you have to lose 11.8% of the time. Your aces have to get cracked. Your aces have to lose to the worst hand in Texas Hold'em 11.8% of the time, okay? You can't skip that. That might mean that you lose three times in a row, four times in a row, five times in a row. Randomness is hard to evaluate as human beings. In fact, it's impossible. In fact, if you read the book Rock Breaks Scissors, 
you'll find out that they are able to find out people embezzling money because they just don't know how to pick random numbers. People can't do it. It's not in our brains. We are not equipped. So anyway, if you feel like the world is against you ever in poker because you know your aces keep getting cracked by seven deuce offsuit, remember you're just paying off your 11.8% of the time that that equity just did not belong to you. Okay, now why is this important besides not choosing seven deuce offsuit to play preflop? Well, let's talk about it. Let's taco about it as if we had tacos. Oh, I want tacos. Okay, um, this is my virtual card deck. Let's talk about equity. I want to run through those examples with you again of some really common scenarios where we're going to talk about equity. There's a really fun little cheat code for calculating your equity when you're in the middle of a hand. And here's how it goes. Let's say that your secret hole cards are six, seven suited. That's something we would play preflop because this is what we call a suited connector. That means the cards are the same suit and they're next to each other in rank, like six, seven, okay? Now let's say that we are almost getting to a flush on this board. We're gonna say there's an ace. We're gonna say there's a three. And we're gonna say there's a nine. No, not a nine of that because then that would be bad. Here we go, nine. Okay, here we go. We're drawing to a flush, which means we don't have a flush yet because the best five card hand in poker wins and we've only got one, two, three, four to a flush. So we need to get a diamond card either on the turn or the river in order to win this hand. Let's say we totally know that our opponent is holding an ace, nine. We know it, they have two pair. They're gonna murder us with our seven high. It's gonna be a bloodbath. Okay, so what percentage of the time are we gonna make it on the turn and the river? Well, here's our fun little fudge rule, the rule of four and two. You take your outs, that means the cards that are out still in the deck, presumably, hopefully not in your opponent's hand, that you could get to win your hand. So the outs here are the rest of the diamonds. So in a deck of cards, we have 13 diamonds, 13 clubs, 13 hearts, and 13 spades, making a 52 card deck. Okay, so if we have 13 and we subtract the four that we see right now, that means we have nine outs, presumably still in the deck, hopefully not in our opponent's hand. Sometimes they can be in your opponent's hand, but you just can't assume that, so forget about it. So. That means you take nine and you multiply it by four, okay? So 36, that is approximately your equity in the hand. That's 36% of the time you're gonna get a diamond on the turn or river, okay? Now, let's pretend that the turn came and it was kind of a bummer for both of us. It was like, Womp womp, neither one of us got helped. We know our dude has the two pair. Let's say he's drunk, he showed us already. And here we are with our hand. Now how much equity do we have? Well, that's why we call this the rule of four and two, because now since there's only one card left to come, our equity is cut in half, okay? So that means that we still have nine outs, but now we multiply that nine outs by two, which means we have 18% equity in this hand. You can see how that equity goes down. So now if you're facing a really big bet, you're getting a bad price. We like deals. We like tiny bets from our opponents that do not add up to our equity. I'm gonna show two more examples. Okay, okay, okay. Because straights are another pretty sweet example that we like, okay? So let's say that we have um, seven, nine, and 10. So now we have eight that we need, right? My kingdom for an eight. Now how many oats do we have? We still know that he has an ace nine, so he's gonna beat us unless we get this straight. So 
Well, we have six, seven, blank, nine, ten. We, we have four eights presumably still in the deck, right? <laughs> Hopefully our opponent isn't holding them. Well, four times four. Sixteen is not a really big percentage, right? So if we're facing a big bet from our opponent here, we're going to have to fold because we only have 16% equity in this hand. Let's pretend, pretend it went check through, though. Let's pretend it went check, check, and a card came that didn't help either of us. And uh, actually, we're going to have a different one because that would actually improve our draw slightly. A card came that didn't help either of us. Now we cut that 16% in half again because we're taking our four outs and we're multiplying it by two. That means we only have 8% equity left in this hand. It's bleak, you guys. It's bleak. You're going to want to fold when you're facing a bet, pretty much any bet, unless your opponent is really weird and bet like the minimum amount and there's a huge fog. Anyway, let's talk about a different kind of straight, though. Let's say instead of this straight, we have... We have the eight. So this is a different kind of straight. That straight before was called a gut shot because we had the hole right in the middle of the straight. This straight is called a double ender. Why? Well, because it's like the meat of the sandwich and it's missing its ends, okay? Like we have six, seven, eight, nine. So we could get either a 10 or a five, right? So how many outs? How many outs? Well, we've got four tens in the deck, hopefully. And we've got four fives in the deck, hopefully. So we have eight outs. Yay! So what's eight times four? We have 32% equity in this hand. Okay, cool. Well, that's fine because a lot of the time people are betting a third pot on the flop. So, you know, we've got odds to call. But let's say that we have that blank card again come on the turn. Doesn't help either of us. Now, how many outs do we have? Well, we still have eight. This time we're multiplying it by two. So we have the, <coughs> we have 16% equity left in this hand. We're probably gonna base a bigger bet than 16% on the turn if he bets into us. So we're gonna end up folding that bad boy. All right, now we're gonna see this equity in action. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. We're on the button again with terrible hand. Terrible hand. The two two five just doesn't have enough good equity, right? I should keep Equilab open so that I can show some of these equities. Plus, he came in anyway. So let's say that we have two five offsuit, and let's say we have like a mediocre hand, maybe like. Um, seven six suited and now we evaluate take a look the seven six suited wins 67.19 percent of the time they have 67 percent equity compared to my 32 percent equity that's why we fold that hand pre-flop eh da 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 na 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 and then let's compare it with uh, that queen two offsuit, right? Because people see a queen and they get all excited. They're like, ooh, a queen, that's nice. That also sucks. Let's compare that queen two offsuit. Well, let's compare it to the seven four offsuit that I'm just holding, right? Because it's still gonna be better than that, right? Right, right? But by a lot, probably not. Look, it's pretty much a 50-50 flip between that queen two offsuit and that seven four offsuit with the queen two offsuit slightly favored, but not enough to go crazy about, right? <laughs> right? Boom, 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 boom. Uh, we're not playing that under the gun. Remember, we call this position under the gun because you're first to act in the hand right after the big blind. And so you're under the gun to make a decision. Hey, you're yeah, let's play with this one. We've got Jack-8, which I'm folding, right? Because he's early position-ish, right? He's in what we call middle position. So when you're in middle position, you're playing hands that are not too crazy, all right? I'm going to show you what kind of hands people are playing from middle position. Maybe you're playing all the suited aces. Maybe you're playing down to ace-10. Maybe you're playing pairs up 
from like fours. Oops. Let's go back to the game for a second. Yeah, we're not playing this one. Maybe you're playing up to fours. And then of course you're playing some of these good guys, right? Oops, maybe not those. Maybe something like this. This isn't exact, besides my opponents aren't GTO robots anyway. Maybe they'll have some suited connectors in there. So let's see, that's what he's playing for middle position. Um, oh man, this one would have been a nice hand again, but we had the middle position guy raising, so I'm not as interested. So let's say we have something like Ace-10 offsuit or Jack-10 offsuit, right? Or Jack-8 offsuit, that's what it was. Doop. Okay, we're going to evaluate that. As you can see, the middle position is slightly favored. So that's why we're not playing hands like that.